How's it going? Today we're going to be tying the bucktail deer hair popper. Um, kind of a classic fly. There's many different people that have tied this fly. We're drawing inspiration out of an old book here by Lefty Cray, Saltwater Fly Patterns. Check this book out on Amazon if you can. But uh, there's a deer hair popper in here that we're going to be tying. There's a deer hair popper that we're going to be drawing a little inspiration out of, or a little inspiration from, you can see right there. That is the Larry Green's hair bug. So I'm sure there have been many people that have tied this fly over the years. We're going to tie our little take on this fly, and uh, we're just going to maybe add a little materials here and there just to give it some extra flavor. Yeah, no, Jerry, we're going to cut all this out. All right, so let's go over the materials. <laughs> so we got our deer hair here. We're going to be using white deer hair, and again, the longer the deer hair the better particularly when tying these poppers we've got some crystal flash for the tail we've got some white marabou we're going to be adding as something extra as well as the flash we've got some white bucktail for the tail we've got some danville 210 denier we're going to be using a white thread but this is just for reference the danville 210 flat wax nylon and for the hooks we're going to be using a umpaqua popper hook um, i don't know the exact model i'm sure you can find it most of this material was bought at saltwaterflies.com, so you can find that stuff there. Just a place that I use a lot for my material. All right, so we're gonna wrap. We're gonna get started by wrapping this thread on here. Now I had someone leave a comment and actually say that they uh, they don't like wrapping too much thread when they spin the deer hair because they like having a little less friction when that, so that deer hair can kind of spin spin freely. So again, it's all personal preference how you like it. It definitely, um, by putting some thread on the hook, will reduce. You know it will add some friction to the deer hair spinning itself so it's all you know it's all personal preference i don't want it to spin too much i you know as long as it kind of goes around in one solid swoop there and sometimes that's it depends on you know how much bucktail i add and all that or how much deer hair i add so this is a pretty simple fly you got to realize back in the day not many people you know had access to uh pre-made heads like the howitzer heads now it's a popular head people use for popper heads or some of the foam cylinders that we use in our Bob's Banners. That's my personal favorite popper by Bob Popovics. So there was a time where, you know, you either had to take surfboard foam, you had to take some sort of uh, craft foam or like a wine cork and carve that out yourself, cut a groove and use a popper hook like this, or use some deer hair and spin some deer hair, stack some deer hair and cut yourself essentially a popper and shape it out of the, the, uh, the deer hair. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's kind of an old, an old uh, popper fly. And in the book, it talks about um, the tire originally tied these flies for striped bass in particular. So we're definitely going to take some of these flies and put them in our fly box for next year just to mix it up instead of just fishing with banners and gurglers all the time or something like that. We're going to take a little white bucktail and tie that just in the back here, just hanging off the back just a little. You want to leave enough room here. You got to realize... We want this bucktail, wherever we stop tying this bucktail, we're essentially going to start our deer hair wraps right in front of it. So we don't want to take up too much real estate with our um, tail section here. So we're going to tie this, and this is going to be right around where the hook point is. I don't want to go too far back with it. And I'm just going to wrap that down. Again, I don't want too much material or thread build up here because we want a nice transition for our deer hair spinning on there. So now we're going to take some pearl crystal flash here. And we're just going to take however much you like. I'm going to go with like five or six strands folded in half. So it's going to be a little flashy, but I don't mind making my flies kind of flashy. Take a couple pieces here. And they're pretty long, so I'm going to take them and fold them in half. So that way we don't waste too much of the, the crystal flash. You could probably fold it some more if you like, but I'm going to leave the uh, flash a little long personally i like taking the flash and poppers and just leaving them to where it kind of just dangles right out the back of the bucktail so now we're going to take some shrun white marabou here and we're going to palmer some of this marabou in just to add a nice little collar and this wasn't on the original fly neither was flash so we're just adding some some other materials here i like adding some marabou to poppers sometimes because when you pop the fly and let it sit for a little bit It'll, uh, it'll kind of be fluttering there in the water. So palmering, we're just taking this marabou and we're just wrapping this around the hook shank. We're creating a nice collar of marabou here. And then we're just going to lock that down, kind of right where we're ready to start tying our deer hair in. 
looking pretty good just lock that down okay right around the hook point is where we're stopping that and then we have all of this room here to spin some deer hair and get a nice um, popper body out of that let's take our deer hair here and again we're going to try and use some pretty long deer hair um, if you only have so much of a patch of deer hair and you have some longer some shorter hairs you can use the shorter hairs for the back because you got to realize we want a nice big head here with a wide face in the front and it's going to taper down kind of like in that traditional foam popper style we are going to take some deer hair here a nice section of this and we're going to start spinning on here we're going to take our deer hair and wrap it right in the middle wrap our thread on there and i'm only doing a couple red uh, thread wraps nice and tight so this material gets locked down it flares open and then we like to take it kind of push it back to where it's nice and tight because we want it to stack really really um really tightly so we get a nice even body when we trim it and essentially all we're going to do is just slowly move up the hook shank and i found this doesn't really make a difference because when you actually trim the fly you don't really notice the the rise in the hook at all you're going to see it when it's not trimmed some of the hair is going to be a little bit taller here a little bit shorter there but for the most part you're not even going to see that so this is just a classic popper hook figured we might as well use them you know essentially i think just the recipe calls for a three times lawn hook so you just want some room to be able to make this nice lawn popper head some more deer hair i want to make sure i have enough here i find if you go with too little deer hair it's just not going to cover the hook shank properly and you know, on the other hand, you don't want to add too much. So you got to find a good middle ground. But And wrap that right in the middle. And you want to wrap it nice and tight. You don't want to break it. I'm trying not to break it. I want to be right on the edge of breaking that thread. You could use, use a Vivas gel spun thread, which I've used in the past. But a lot of times, uh, I like the 210 denier. I use this thread so much, so I have a pretty good understanding of, you know, the breaking strength on it. Oh, and we have deer hair in my uh, vodka drink. Nice. Uh, the woes of being a fly tire. All right, so we're going to take some more deer hair here. And by the way, I've broken the thread on these many times, so I'm trying not to. Because if I do, it's just going to be, it could be a catastrophe. But we'll take our next section here, spin that. And you can see, you know, as long as you have enough hair on there, even with that little bit of thread, it spins, but I, I just don't want it to spin too much. So it's all personal preference. I just get in the habit of wrapping some thread around the hook shank. But again, put some good pressure on there so you lock that hair down. Hey, EFB, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Cool. this is kind of like you know this is an old school saltwater popper because you know you either had to take like i said earlier you had to take there were people using uh, surfboard foam there were people using um all sorts of different foam materials for whatever it may be and then trying to shave that down and i remember lou tabry i think he used surfboard foam for some of his flies and i know joe blados of the crease fly who before he used foldable foam that you can get at like michael's or wherever um like you know a foldable thin foam sheet 
he would use surfboard foam. And I remember in that book that we have, Innovative Saltwater Flies, he talks about his wife getting really pissed off that there was surfboard foam dust all over the uh, the living room or something because he was like making poppers out of them. I'm going to take a little bit of purple and add that in. Thank you for reminding me. I wanted to do some purple and then uh, a little bit more white. So that's actually what we're going to do right now. Just to add a little color. If I, I wish I had some like red or some yellow because that would kind of fit the white daytime theme a little bit better. But the only thing is this purple isn't that long. So I want to try and cut it as long as possible. I'm going to get down as close as I can to the, the bottom there. Take a little bit of purple, add some color. You could always use red for the head. Red is always a good color for popper heads. That's a really good color. But we don't have any, so we'll use some purple at the end here. So it's like a homemade cat toy, you know what I mean? But you got to make sure you take the hook off, obviously. Or tie it on a piece of, like, uh, you could tie it on a piece of um, plastic. All right. We, we keep getting a little bit more room here, so I'm just going to push this back just a hair. All right. The only reason I'm pushing it back so tight is because I want this fly to be as tight as possible so when we trim it, we don't have any gaps or anything like that. That's the only reason, you know. All right. I'm going to wrap the thread here. I'm just going to whip finish here. Oh. That doesn't count as breaking the thread, all right? That doesn't count. Doesn't count. We're good. All right. Now for the fun part, we're going to trim this fly. So the main thing is, this is obviously a lot of hair. So we want to have a, we want to have the fly be larger in the front and tapered down towards the back. So I'm just going to take my time. I'm just going to try and not over trim it. And uh, I'm going to essentially try to just shape the fly so that it tapers down towards the back evenly. The other thing is I don't want too much material on the bottom. So I want to make sure that the material doesn't stick down past the hook point. That's me personally. In the book, it comes right down to around the hook point. I'm going to have it be just a little bit shorter. So we're going to start out. And again, I'm going to angle my scissors down towards the shank. Now, you don't want to cut too much, but you do, you do want to taper it down because think of the old kind of, I think, quote unquote, pencil popper, fly poppers you used to see look a little different than the, the pencil poppers we think of for striped bass, but I believe that's what they used to call this particular style here. If I'm not wrong, maybe someone can correct me in the comments here. Try not to trim the marabou at the back. And again, all we're doing is just trying to work this down. I kind of do it in sections at first. It kind of is a little bit blocky, if you will, or it has some shapes made like a, you know, octagon or whatever. But then I try and trim it down and smooth it around. So I'm just going to slowly take some material and I'm going to, you know, find where I need to tilt the scissors in some or just try and clean it up a bit. You know, you just don't want to over trim it because once you over trim it, you can't really put any material back on. Right. Um, just like when I'm sanding down my cork handles in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I can't. Jerry, can we get the vacuum in here, please? God, I can't even laugh without blowing this stuff off.
work on getting the shape right. A nice way is just slowly moving it around and trying to see if any areas are larger than the others. You know what I mean in terms of the shape. It's a little bit easier for my eye to use than the, I think to pick it up on the camera because I can track it a little better with my focus. But that's looking pretty good. I think I might just want to take a little bit more material off the belly here. Because again, I really want to make sure that it swims properly. I want it to, I want the hook to be facing down. It's fun if you tie these flies, but if they don't fish right, then it's, you know, then you do cut the hook off and you let your cat chase it around the house, I guess, at that point. And then your wife, you know, was, or your girlfriend was yelling at you because you made a mess. Now there's deer hair all over the place. It's in the kitchen too, because it was all over your pants. You know what I mean? You didn't catch any fish on it. So you want to make sure it's trimmed properly. Lightly cut some of the hair in the middle to where it almost kind of has like a, like an indented or like a cup. You know what I mean? In the middle. So it kind of, instead of having a flat face, it's a little bit more, uh, it's kind of like a cupped popper face. But I think that's pretty good. You know, I have a tendency to over trim flies. And once you over trim them, you, uh, you can't put it back on. So I think I'm just, this is pretty good. You know, I guess you could always keep a pair of scissors on you and leave it over trimmed. And then you can always trim it while you're on the water if you need to trim it a little bit more. But again, the main thing is I don't want my material to come under the hook point. And the weight of this hook point in particular, I think it should help kind of tilt the popper back a little when you um, strip on this popper, make a nice noise. Again, it's not going to be as loud as something like a bob spanner, like a a uh, closed foam or something like that that has really high buoyancy and a large diameter but this is almost wider than some of the bob spanners that we tie um, it's definitely gonna be a little heavier but you know it's kind of a cool old school popper and something different so I'll definitely have some of these in my box and we'll try them out on some stripers and bluefish uh, come the spring next uh, next year or this year oh no it's no it's next year in, in a day it'll be or two days it'll be next year <laughs> But uh, I think the purple and white came out nice. Red and red and white, classic striped bass coloration. Yellow and white, green and white. I mean, you could do whatever you like, you know. What I mean? so let's take a look at the the actual fly in the book. And let's see what I tied. And let's see how we did. Yeah, there's a little bit of a size difference, but check that out. I'd say that's pretty. I'd say that's pretty good right there. Not too shabby.